I would bring that up almost every time I met a new person. Well, I tried to go to the city hall and change my name to the comeback kid, but they, <laughs> they, wouldn't, they wouldn't go for it. All right, well, we are now chilling at the Far Blue with Daryl Evans, AKA Chop. Before we even get into this, <laughs> yes. tell me about Chop. What's going on with that? Well, Chop came about uh, when I first went downtown to work at Staples Center at the time. Uh, I was hired as the director of suites and premier seat sales. I guess uh, when I was running around an office, you know, when I asked somebody to do something, it was, let's go Chop Chop, and it's kind of stuck. Usually the nicknames come from the playing days. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of awesome to get one. Well, that might have been about my stick handling. Yeah. I chopped it up. So, I mean, that could have That's been. That's what maybe my question was going game. through the neutral zone. Are you yeah. just chopping the puck yeah. around here? We're going to play our first game with you. Uh-oh. It's called Chill or Not Chill, Skating Without Laces. Extra chill. <laughs> so here's the thing. That sounds like the least chill thing I've ever heard. So I need to understand both how you started doing this and how you can even do it. Well, I, I started when I first started playing hockey. I couldn't s skate from me to you without falling basically on my ass. You used to play ice hockey? Shut up. I became a goalie because I couldn't stand up. So <laughs> that, that makes sense. Yeah, Smart. I became a yeah. goalie and because you could just kind of stand there and fall down and I got a shut out my first game. That's going to wall. <laughs> one day my mom and dad didn't come to watch me play because we only had one car. My dad was working a Saturday job and one of the kids in the league could flip the puck a little bit. Well, he flips it up and it hits me right between the eyes. So I come home, my nose has got a little bend like this, and I look like a raccoon. Yeah. And my dad says, uh, how was hockey today, son? I said, oh, dad, I loved it. He goes, you learn to skate next year, you don't play. Said, well, how the hell am I gonna learn to skate by next year, you know? And they put me in a power skating school, and the first power skating coach that I had uh, had a huge impact on you know, that time of my life. And, even to today, and uh, he told me to keep an eyelid or two undone at the top for flexibility. Sure. So I eventually did that, and then went down to five. And then five I used undone. Five eyelids undone. And at the end of my career, I went over to Europe and play. By the time I came back, I took the lace out, because I mean, I was using, I had a whole, so much lace, it was just hanging around doing nothing. Yeah. So then I started using the lace about two feet long, just to put it through like two or three eyelids so my skates wouldn't fall off. And I thought, what the hell am I doing here? So I just got rid of it. I save a lot of time getting dressed. I, I can get ready really quick. I just So you just slide them on like slippers? Like slippers, away you go. It, you never once you, did you pop out of the skates? Um, I, I don't go fast. I mean, at this age, how the hell are you gonna go fast? Yeah, you're just coasting now. Yeah. Chill or not chill, coming back from being down five nothing against the Oilers in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's as chill as you can get. Pretty chill. That's pretty chill. Do you pride yourself on having maybe the most famous goal in Los Angeles Kings history? You look like a ballerina. You almost did a pirouette there. You were spinning around. Everyone's chasing you. Do you even remember, or is it just all a blur of chaos? You know, it it's a blur and, and it's a, and a, a yeah. memory. Like, uh, like, I can remember every moment of it. The 10 minute mark, 9.56 to be exact, I, along with a few of my teammates, we get thrown out of the game. So we went to the locker room with a few of our teammates, and, you know, everybody starts getting undressed. Like, what are we getting undressed for? You know, it's 5 2 at that time. Yeah. You know, they're thinking the game's over. The game's not over yet, you know? I'm staying dressed. I stayed in gear, and of course the team tied it up. Uh, you know, five seconds left, went back in overtime. I would bring that up almost every time I met a new person. And if you don't, I'm telling you that you you have my support in doing that. Well, I tried to go to the city hall and change my name to the comeback kid, but they, they wouldn't they wouldn't go for it. You've now dabbled into the announcing game. Is there any game or any call that you've done in your career that sticks out as one of your favorite ones ever? I feel shocked. Yeah, there's no doubt I still get a rush. I, I don't think anything can compare to the games that we called in the Stanley Cup playoffs. In particular, the finals. I think one game that really stands out is when we were in Chicago and we came back and beat them in game seven in their building. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be a player in accomplishing that feat because, you know, just being part of it in the capacity we were, unbelievable. Wow. We always gotta have some snacks on the far blue. I know you're a chocolate guy, I'm a chocolate guy. So I'm gonna have some M&Ms. We're gonna tune up some, some bagel bites right here. So I'm gonna set this timer. And now, while it's cooking, you have a minute. We wanna know, you get your last meal on earth, death row meal. What are you having? One appetizer, one main course, one side, one dessert. I'm going to one buffet in Vegas. How's that? <laughs> so for, for everything. Now, uh, that, that's got to be legal, right? I think it's, so. Uh, you just said one thing. I went, that to, is, I went a, to the buffet. That's a loophole yeah, I answer. I think he lives yeah. forever now because yeah. he just never leaves, right? Yeah. He just keep eating. And instead of taking a plate, I take a wheelbarrow and I just fill it up. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Now I'm going to time travel with you, okay? We're going to go forward in time. I take you 
in your prime, zoom you to today, and you're on this Kings team, and you get to play with two guys on your line, any two you want. Who you got? Wow, on my line, I'd like to play with Andre Kopitar and Kevin Fiala. So you're you're at line one, PP one guy, the yeah. whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah. That's oh, a yeah, first yeah, line. Yeah, why guy not? Right you're you're yep. dialing up a 50 goal season with those two on yeah. your line for sure. All right, we're gonna close you out with the Gordie Howe hat trick. We're gonna give you a goal, an assist, and a fight. Things in your life. So your goal, clearly, you are a man of high fashion. You've got a collection of unbelievable suits. So what's a goal for one of your next suits coming up? What's something you want to try? Maybe a design, maybe an accessory you haven't done before. The Thanksgiving one that you have is one of my personal Oh, you like that one? Un <laughs> iconic. Uh, the, the, that one, the Dio de los yeah. Muertos one. That was, that was that cool. One, that yeah. one, I like that one That's too. That was cool, yeah. Incredible. So yeah, what's the next? Probably kind of roll it back to way back in, in the day. And that's probably to get back to wearing a fedora again. Okay, here's your assist. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an announcer, a hockey announcer, so bad. I shadowed everybody in eighth grade. I would do all that stuff. And if you can just record a video of you and your announcer voice, just say, talking about me, Chris, just, I didn't never made the NHL, but maybe just like something at my house, like making my bed. Just do a little a little play-by-play -play of me making my bed in the announcer voice, and I would feel really good about that. All right, let's 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 do it here. He already, you, you could already hear the announcer Yeah, he came just right snapped there. right in. Well, here's Chris waking up. It's uh, just a little bit afternoon, folks. He's getting out of his Buzz sure. Lightyear flannels and he's getting ready to kick off his day. As you see, he's got a nice little tuck and fold with the top sheet going back there, putting the pillows up appropriately on the top of his bed, and now comes out his chinchilla lined comforter. That keeps him warm at night. He's gonna have himself a great day. All the best, Chris. Look at that. Incredible. The, so the last one, the fight. We wanna know what is one of your hottest takes. What's something that you think not a lot of people agree with, but you're like, I am right about this, and you won't, you won't budge on it. Helping people out and just being a good person. And there's a lot of people that don't want to take the time to do that. And I'm a firm believer of that, uh, you know, get involved in charity and all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, the impact that you can have on some, somebody's life by just being nice and putting a smile on somebody's face, just saying hi. There's a lot of people that won't take the time to do it. And it's the simplest little thing that costs nothing, but has a huge impact. Oh, and in case I don't see you, Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I mean, imagine being asked, what's your possibly hot take? The, possibly the most perfect And it's like the most chop answer of all time. It's just so perfect and so nice. Well, thank you so much for pleasure. coming out and hanging with us. Best one I've ever done with you guys. Yeah, yes, agree, agree. Next agree. one's on the plane. What's the weirdest thing you've eaten? <sighs> I don't know, what's weird? I mean, uh... I mean, I had ostrich recently. Who? 